Hey guys, it's Shaylin. I'm here today with another video. So today I'm doing my 2020 yearly wrap-up video. This is something that I pretty much do every year. I think I've done this every year since 2016, so it's a tradition. Basically, I'm just going to go through my writing stats for the year, my goals for the year, and talk about what I accomplished or did not accomplish, and also chat about what my goals are going into 2021, uh, which has already begun by the time this video is going up, but I'm filming this kind of early. It's only the 22nd of December, so if any of this changes, editing magic will swoop in and correct that. This year's been weird. Um, <laughs> if you told me at the start of 2020 that a world pandemic would shut down everything and also that death steel is canon, I'd have killed you on sight. Weird year. Literally like the first thing I did this year, like January 2nd, was see cats in theaters. And I think God has been punishing me ever since. I'm sure everyone relates to this, but for me it was a really weird year. It was the first year that I was out of school because I finished school last December. And so I was already having a huge crisis breakdown uh, in January about my life because post-grad existential crisis, that was really fun. The combination of me not being in school, the fact that I work from home, combined with the fact that there's a pandemic, I feel like I didn't accumulate any memories of this year. Like, I nothing happened. Every day was so the same. It, you know how like everything was happening constantly all the time, but none of it was in your life? Did anyone else have a year like that? We're not gonna dwell on all of the trauma that we have gathered. Instead, I'm just gonna talk about writing. <laughs> I'm gonna start with kind of the same thing that I did last year where I'm gonna talk about my stats for the year. This is just something I tally out of curiosity, to be honest. It doesn't really matter. The number of words I write in the year is irrelevant. I don't have goals for this or anything. To be honest, I was just kind of curious. I did it last year out of curiosity, and so I did it again out of curiosity because I wanted to see how it compared. I knew I had written less than last year because last year I spent more of the year drafting, whereas this year I spent, I feel like, most of the year editing. And to be honest, when I added it up, I feel like I wrote more in the year than I would have anticipated considering that I spent so much of the year editing and I also had one of the worst writing slumps of my life. There was about a three month period where I barely wrote anything because I was having a little breakdown, but we're fine. We did it. We recovered. I'm good now. So we're going to start with novels. So I was drafting two novels this year, one that I finished in March Honey Vinegar, which I had started actually in 2018, and then another that I started immediately after, wrote for about a month, then had my breakdown, stopped writing, not because of any particular reason, more just because I was switching to do another project, edit Honey Vinegar, and then restarted for NaNoWriMo. For Honey Vinegar, this one is a bit hard to tally. I finished the first draft in early March at 88,000 words, Currently, after developmental editing, the draft is 95,000 words. Actually, exactly. It's so satisfying. It's exactly 95,000 words. That would bring us to a total of 24,670 words based on where I was at the start of the year. I think the draft was like, I don't know, around 71,000. There is a decent amount of words that have just been lost in cyberspace because, like I said, the draft is 95,000 words now after developmental editing because I added quite a lot, but I definitely added more than 7,000 words in the developmental edit, but I also cut a lot. My first developmental edit, actually, the book clocked in around the same word count as um, as it was beforehand. I was like 89 or 90,000 or something because I'd added a lot, but also cut a lot. A lot of those words we can't really account for whatsoever. And then I went back and added some things that I realized while doing that edit, the book needed. More than 24,670 words, but this is all we can account for. So we're going with that. Then for Holding a Ghost, I'm counting both the drafts because I can. This is my writing stats video and I can do what I want. The first take of the book, which I started in um, March, I wrote 20 thousand one hundred and ninety six words of that draft in about the first month 
two months maybe, I don't really remember. Time is an illusion. Before I kind of put that aside because it wasn't really working, I was having a breakdown and also I wanted to start working on editing Honey Vinegar. We had 20,000 words and then in November I restarted the book and did NaNoWriMo and wrote 31,787 words for a total of 51,983 Holy Any Ghost words in 2020. It honestly feels like so much less than that. It was compressed into such like just two tiny little time frames. It does not feel like I wrote 50,000 words. It literally feels like way less than that. Then for short stories, this is the one that might change because I have a short story that I'm working on that I hope to finish by the end of the year. But at the moment I've finished eight stories this year, which I'm, I'm very impressed with. I can't believe that. And I have two in progress, one of which I hope to finish. At the moment, those stories, the eight finished and the two in progress, amount to 31,178 words. And then finally for poetry, I wrote four whole poems. That's right, I can't be stopped. For a total of 1,510 words. Yes, amazing. So this is for a grand total of 109,341 words for the year, a bit less than last year, because I think I wrote about 120,000 last year. But that's kind of what I anticipated because my biggest project for the year was my honey vinegar developmental edit, which was, took so many months. That was kind of like my main project that I was working on for a very large chunk of the year. July, August, September, and October, I think, and a bit of December. My worth is not based on my productivity, so it's not like I'm disappointed or excited about this amount. That's just how much I wrote this year, and I'm cool with that. In terms of publication for the year, my publication roundup, this was a good year for me and my submittable account. This was probably the best thing about the year. In the first half of the year, so like January to July, I had five stories accepted and I also had one published that had been accepted in 2019 to the point that um, every story except for one that I was actively submitting got accepted and so from July until like just recently, I was only submitting one story, and that story is Cuzzy Girls, which is never going to be published. I've kind of accepted defeat. Am I still submitting it? Yes, because I love getting the extremely curt and rude rejection letters that story brings in. But it was really shocking. I'd kind of been anticipating kind of a similar year as the previous two years where I get like one or two stories accepted per year. Um, so to get five and to have six published was insanely exciting. So quick roundup of my publications just because this is really the one good thing the year brought me and I want to just sit in it for a moment. So the first story that I had published was Barefoot in the Fiddlehead. This is issue 282, winter 2020. If you want to order this issue, you can do it through their submittable. Um, I thought you had to like email them to order the because they're kind of hard to order, but yeah, you can order through their submittable, it turns out. So that's where that is. It's only available in print. Then I had a story published online in Manola Review called Solarium. That one's linked in the description. Then I had um, Wishbone come out in Prism International. This is their sprawl issue. It's, what's the number? I don't know. It's linked in the description. There's also a video reading of me reading it that I did for the issue's launch. Then I had a story come out in The Puritan, Cherry and Jane in the Garden of Eden. That one is also linked online. You can read it for free. Hold Me Under Till I See the Light is in the new quarterly. This one they have online, but it's kind of complicated because it's not always available for non-subscribers. So there are periods of time where maybe you'll be able to read it. I'm not really sure. It was like available for a week. I don't know if it ever will be again, or it will be in like five years, who knows? But it is also available in print. And then finally, just last week, um, my story Beautiful Animal came out in this beautiful, stunning new issue of Room. It's 43.4, it's the twine issue. Oh, I didn't say what issue of T and Q it was. It's the most recent one, uh, 156. Anyways, so that's that. Very exciting, uh, love that for me. So now we're just going to segue into the goals for the year, which is kind of the main purpose of this video. I'm gonna start by going through my 2020 goals and talk about whether I achieved them, whether I didn't, and then we'll talk about my goals for 2021. So my first goal for 2020 was to finish a clean draft of honey vinegar. I was calling it a clean draft, not a first draft, because a first draft kind of implies that you've never edited it, but I was editing that book as I wrote it. By a clean draft, I meant I want to finish the first draft that has been edited as I was writing it, if that makes sense. I did that and I went 
a level beyond that, my deadline I'd set for myself. Which, by the way, the way I set goals is extremely relaxed. Basically, at the start of the year, I set in a handful of goals for myself that are like really big tasks, but they're priority tasks. I kind of set individual due dates for different tasks as they come up. Um, so like if I start writing a short story, I might be like, I want to be done this in two months, but I don't really care about it. I'm just very relaxed about my goals. If I don't reach the deadline, I just extend it. It's not a big deal. But the deadline I had set for myself, and I always make my deadlines quite loose, um, was literally December 31st of 2020. And I finished it on March, it was like March 8th or something. First draft, that was great, clean draft, I guess. And then I also developmentally edited the whole book, which was an undertaking. Not because the book was a disaster, but just because, I don't know, there was a lot I wanted to do with it. The next goal is the only one that I did not achieve. And it's also the littlest one or the easiest one. And I think it's something that I kind of just threw in here last minute. And I'm like, why did I make this a goal? I mean, I understand why I made it a goal. But anyways, it was to rewrite Symbiosis. This was a short story that I wrote years ago. I think it was like 20. 17 or something. One of the first short stories I ever wrote and I wanted to rewrite it because I would like it to go in my collection But I'm really not happy with the state of the draft. Uh, I just didn't do that You know, maybe I'll do it between December 22nd and December 31st, but forecast says unlikely This is one of those things that maybe I should have just done it. It would have taken a week But I didn't I have no excuse. I think it was just never the priority project. There was always something that felt more pressing and so I never ended up prioritizing this and then I just didn't do it even though it was not that hard and it wouldn't take that long. Oops. So my next goal was to start holding a ghost. Obviously this was an extremely light goal because I just wanted to start it and I'm now and I ended up actually doing that twice. I'm so good at my goals that I abandon months worth of work so that I can do them all over again. Um, obviously I did that. I made 31,000 words of progress. Good to go on that one. And then my final goal was to start submitting poetry. I did do this. I submitted poems a handful of times. I submitted three poems to an issue of a magazine once in February. They still haven't rejected me. It was submitted over email, so I don't think they ever got it because that issue has uh, been published many months ago. So I don't know what happened to that. And then I did submit a poetry portfolio of a group of poems later in the year because I had no fiction to submit um, except for Kudzu Curls and that was getting depressing because I've been submitting that story since 2017 and it's like literally never even gotten a personalized rejection. It's gotten like 25 rejections. Everyone hates it. I, mm, it brings me so much pain. <sighs> I was like, I need to submit something other than Kudzu Girls before I have an aneurysm. So I submitted some poems. So I did do that. I think I'm really bad at submitting poetry. I don't have as much confidence. And so I don't submit my poems that often. And then for my reading goal, my reading challenge was 50 books. At the moment, how many books have I read? More than 50. Um, I knew that was gonna be fine. And I've read 72 books at the moment. I'll put up how many I end up reading by the end of the year. My other goal, this is another one that I did not achieve. I made a goal to reread three books. I don't know why I made this a goal. It seemed so enticing at the start of 2020 and then I didn't do it. I reread one book, History of Wolves by Emily Fridland, and it was a joy. I, I quite enjoyed rereading that book. It's my favorite book. But then I just never ended up reading, rereading two other books. I think it's just because I always had really exciting, cool looking new books that I hadn't read before to read. And so I never ended up prioritizing reading something I've already read. Um, should I reread more? Probably, but I didn't and it's fine. I don't know. This was a dumb goal. I don't know why I made it a goal. I don't really care that I didn't <laughs> To end this, we're going to go into my 2021 goals. It's gonna look pretty similar to last year. I basically usually just have like a handful of goals that are like my most priority tasks and then usually one random thing that I will inevitably not do. I only have three goals for the year and I think it's because every single year I make my I make fewer and fewer goals because I realize, oh, last year I had a couple extraneous ones that didn't really matter and obviously if they don't really matter, I'm not gonna end up doing them. And I keep just whittling my goals down every year to be just the core most important things. These are three realistic important goals. So my first one, and this is the most exciting one, uh, is to finish editing Honey Vinegar and start querying it. This makes me want to scream. So I've been writing novels since I was 13. So it's been 10 years, almost 11 years. The thing about me is I was not one of those children who started writing and was like, this is just for me to learn. 
No, every single book I ever wrote, I thought I was going to publish, even when I was like 13. I didn't know what I was doing. Along the way, and we won't get into the whole tale, I have a video on every book I've ever written where I talk about why I ended up not querying or trying to publish all the books from my youth. Spoiler alert, most of the time it's because I just realized they were bad and moved on with my life. Finally, I think I've gotten to a point in my life, in my career, where I feel ready as a person to start pursuing publishing a novel length work and I also have a project that I think is going to be ready. I have been doing a lot of editing work on this book, more than I've ever done on a full-length novel. If I've taken it this far, if I've gotten the project to this stage, I don't think there's any reason why I can't take it to the very end. It's currently at the critiquing stage. I have no idea how long that will take. I feel really good about the book. I think it's pretty strong. I feel pretty good about my ability to edit it based on feedback that I get. So my loose timeline, I guess, is that I want to start querying it late in the year. So probably around the fall. I think because I think that's realistic. Maybe it'll be done sooner, maybe it'll be done later. I'm not really sure, but yeah, that's the goal. My second goal is to finish the first draft of Holding a Ghost and to get it to the critiquing stage. So do my pre-critique development on it. Like my process is I write the first draft and I edit it as I'm writing. Then I do my developmental edit. So I go in and I make changes based on things that have come up in the first draft and then I get it to be critiqued. I think I learned my lesson this year. I made a mistake with Holding the Ghost because I started writing it too soon. When I finished writing Honey Vinegar, I was so excited to start my next book that I literally started it like the next week. I understand why I did that. I had been writing that book for so long that I was just desperate to write something else and I'd been so excited to start this book that I just I wanted to start. It's like the book was just like bursting out of my brain. It was just exploding and I just had to start writing it um, before it shattered my skull into many pieces in its attempt to vacate my skull. It also was kind of a problem because the task of writing a book and the task of doing that initial developmental edit are both huge tasks. Like that initial honey vinegar developmental edit took multiple months and I just can't give enough attention to both those things at a time. I can't give the full attention I want to give to a book in the drafting stage and the full attention to a book at that stage of the developmental edit. And so what happened is I had to take a super long book, super long break from Holding a Ghost to do that developmental edit. And then I just felt disconnected from it. And I don't want that to happen again. Um, it really does break the immersion and it's harder to get immersed in that first draft. From now on, at least for my next book, I have learned that I should finish writing the first draft and then do that initial developmental edit before I start my next book. So I don't have any goals to start writing my next book. It very well could happen because I will probably finish holding the ghost quite early in the year. Like this book is writing itself super fast. I'm about halfway through the draft. It's not going to be a super long book. It's only going to be around 60,000 words by my estimate and I'm 30,000 words in. Right now I'm working on some, some short story stuff just that I want to get wrapped up. Probably it'll take just one or two months to finish this, so I'll probably be done the first draft in like February or March, edit it, and then who knows? You know, it's super likely that by the time it's the fall, I'm hopefully querying honey vinegar. Hopefully Holding a Ghost is at the critiquing stage, so that would be a great time for me to start writing my new book, which is going to be Lamb's Playing God. But I don't have it as a goal because it's just not the most pressing task. The things I want to focus on are finishing and editing Holding a Ghost and finishing and editing Honey Vinegar. And then my final goal is to polish all the stories in Pareidolia. So Pareidolia is my first short story collection. I've been working on it since late 2016. All of the stories I published this year really were a huge step towards that book being able to be published. Like the draft is almost done. There are just a handful of stories that need a bit of work. Most of them are fully polished because they've been published and so I polished them with the editors of those magazines and obviously because I was submitting them I felt they were quite clean. There are only a handful that need some work. I mean, because you girls, who freaking knows, that one hasn't been published but I've edited it so many times that I feel like I don't know what is left for there to be done. Rewriting Symbiosis is one of them and then I just have a couple other stories that just need some edits, need some polishing up. So that's my final goal. I would really like to just have that entire collection finished, polished, essentially ready to publish. Um, I've considered querying it if that's done before Honey Vinegar, but it also seems like it would be kind of a dead end because querying a collection is uh, the worst because no one wants your collection, Shaylin, is what I've learned. Probably not going to do that, but I would like to have it ready to publish and all the stories fully edited so I just don't have to think about them. Just kind of to have a manuscript complete and like off 
my to-do list. Finally, I'm just setting my reading challenge to 50 books again uh, because that's what I always set my reading challenge to, even though I usually read more than that. And I'm not gonna have any weird reread this stuff this year, just read 50 books. So that's a roundup on my goals for 2020 and my goals for 2021. Please tell me all about your goals for the year. I'd love to hear what you're trying to get done this year or what you accomplished last year. So thank you guys so much for watching. Ignore someone shoveling snow in the background. If you have any questions, you can always send me an ask on Tumblr and I'll see you in another video.